What up, YouTube? Before we start the video, we got a very important announcement for you. That's right, we have our new milestone giveaway for 2,000 subscribers. That is a CGC 9.8 graded Thor number one. This cover is a Nick Klein sketch variant that is also signed by Donny Gates. What? Are you crazy? <laughs> yes, we are. When we hit 2,000 subs, we're giving away this bad boy. So make sure to hit that subscribe button, ring that bell, and give us a like. It would be much appreciated because we want to give this away, but we only can do that when we hit 2,000 subs. Let's get to the video. What up, comic fam? It's your boy, Jim, with a fresh new comic book day video for you for the week of October 9th. And uh, it's a little it's a little dainty, a little dainty, but it doesn't mean it's not packing a punch. There's some really cool books coming out this week. A couple new number ones, a couple other ongoings. It should be an enjoyable week, just a little bit of a shorter week, but let's go ahead and get to it. First up with our independence, we've got Space Ghost, issue number six from Dynamite Comics, David Papos. This has been a super fun uh, run. Uh, it's Silly Goose Time, a little bit of a classic coming into a modern era. Looks like we're dealing with Moltar. Love that. I really love being able to see these villains more specifically in a much more drastic light. Most of my exposure to these characters was the Adult Swim show, so it's been lighthearted and comical. Uh, and I never really watched, you know, here and there I watched the old school cartoon, but I never saw a lot of these villains as actual villains. I just saw them as comedic relief. So it's cool to to read this series and get a better grasp on some of these villains. So I am looking forward to this book. It should be pretty fun. All right, jumping over to Image, we have Transformers issue number 13 from Danny Warren Johnson and new artist Jason Howard. It looks like he'll be on the book for the next two issues, kind of little mini arc. It looks like we're jumping into the past to kind of see Starscream's, you know, how he survived. It looked like he might be dead. So after what, you know, Optimus did with Cybertron, looks like we're jumping over to Starscream, which there might lie some secrets in what's going on in the future by looking into the past. So, uh, you know, Jason Howard being on the artwork, I can't be more excited outside of it just being Daniel Warren Johnson. I think the artists that have been working on this book, whether it's Daniel Warren Johnson, Jorge Corona, or now James Howard, I think creatively we've really set the tone for being very equal in, in art, art style. I think that's a really good way to match. And I think these artists play very well in their own sandbox. So to see Jason Howard, on the artwork, I am couldn't be more excited. So looking forward to this one. All right, jumping over to DC with our only DC book, and that's Absolute Batman issue number one from the All In Initiative from Scott Snyder. And I'm not going to lie, I'm actually really excited about this book. I think uh, the concept of the All In Initiative has got me a little down, but the individual books that are coming out of the All In Initiative, the Absolute line, I'm very excited for. I think they're going to be a lot of fun. I think they're going to be nice new takes. And I, I just hope that creatively we don't, we just don't misuse this opportunity to do something new. DC seems to be in a very weird space where every six months, this is the next event. You know, All In is this, this new event that's really going to get a good place for new readers and old to jump back in. And we get that every six months to the point where it's just that new jumping on point just doesn't feel as fresh and new as it should be. So I'm going to put that feeling aside for this book because I am genuinely excited for Absolute Batman. I think it's a crazy wild take and I think Snyder's going to kill it. So uh, yeah, I'll just leave my lack of enthusiasm for DC's marketing and just have fun with individual issues. And that's where this is gonna start. Hey, I'm interrupting the video. It's only because I've got something really important to tell you. I know you know what we're giving away when we hit 2,000 subscribers. I gotta let you know about what we're giving away when we hit 1,250 subscribers. We're giving away this uncanny X-Men number one signed by Jim Chung, CVC grade 9.8. When we hit 1,250 subscribers, you could potentially win this, but you have to be subscribed to our channel. So hit that sub button, ring that bell, Give us a like. Let's get back to the video, shall we? All right, jumping over to Marvel, we have Exceptional X-Men issue number two from Ewing. I really liked issue one. I know there were a lot of people that didn't really necessarily like issue one. They didn't really like the the direction the book was going, and it kind of felt flat. But for me, this is kind of filling in the, the slice of life aspect for my books. We got a resentful Kitty Pride who is, is, is not really wanting to become an X-Men, but it looks like she's it's being thrust upon her to become an X-Men by Emma Stone. So... Yeah, I, I know we've got new characters in this book. I think that's exciting. I understand if it's not people's speeds. I get that. And if you're not down for it, then don't read it. But I, I think it's going to be fun. I really like the first issue, so I'm almost willing to bet issue two will not have a slump. 
Uh, I can put money on it. Watch me my words. All right, after that, we've got Phoenix issue number four from Stephanie Phillips. Looks like we're taking on Guar. Uh, you know, this run has been fine. It's There's been some cool things that have been happening, but overall it hasn't really moved how I feel like the Phoenix Force or the Phoenix should really move a book. That's not a negative. It's just, it's just kind of down the middle, right? There's nothing wrong with that. The introduction of Guar being in the book, that sounds like fun. It does feel like we're, we're pulling villains from across the cosmos, which I think is a good idea. But still, I don't quite understand what we're doing in the book other than just kind of making sure that we know that Jean is the Phoenix and and she's going to be doing her thing and she'll be used at some point within the overall X-Men universe, sure to, to quell any fires <laughs> uh, that are going on between any other mutants. Hint, hint. All right, after that, we've got a new number one. We got Sentinels, issue number one. And this is very interesting. Again, I'm trying all the X Men books out, no matter my knowledge of them. And this is a take on the Sentinel program being run by mutants. That sounds dope. <laughs> I, uh, you know, I know the artist was on the most recent Spider Punk run, which is kind of raw, and I like that. And it looks like we're going after Omega Red. Cool. So it looks like we're going after rogue mutants who have left the idea of Krakoa and haven't really simulated back into society peacefully. And they're just kind of doing their own thing. Um, you know, I, I will optimistically check it out and uh, give it a shot. I don't, I, you know, it's not like, oh, my gosh, Sentinel's coming out. But it's a new number one. It's an X-Men book. It's going to be on the pull for now. All right. To end the show, we got the Ultimates issue number five. This run, I can't say it enough, has been effing fantastic it's been amazing i think it's proven that camp can really hold his own outside of jonathan hickman's writing you know jonathan hickman has laid the foundation for this new ultimates universe and camp has just run with it and i think he's done a fantastic job and it gives me hope for when the inevitable departure of hickman leaves marvel whether it's just ultimates or goes and does something else in marvel this gives me hope that camp and the other writers know what the hell they're doing and that they won't have a problem of mismanaging the ultimates line and not just kind of bogging it down with more books and, and stretching it out longer than it needed to be, AKA Krakoa. So uh, yeah, I'll even say potential pick of the week. I mean, I'm going to either say ultimates transformers or absolute Batman will probably be my pick of the week, but uh I'm going to take my time reading these since I don't have so many books. I do have some new mangas that are, I think, coming out, but we'll talk about those on my new comic book day short, if there are any, but stay tuned for that. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this week's new comic book day video for the week of October 9th. Let me know down in the comments, what are you picking up today? What are you reading first? And what's your potential pick of the week? As always, be sure to hit that subscribe button, ring that bell, and give us a like. It'd be much appreciated as we're on the road to 1,250 subscribers. We can't do it without your help, so please, if you're not already subscribed, hit that sub button. Now, get ready. This Sunday, it does appear, it looks like we're going back to our normal times of 8 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time on Sundays. It sounds like Nate will be here. You will have two fat guys talking about their two big fat pull lists. <laughs> so it should be a good time. Get ready, sit back, pop the popcorn, pop open the beer, and uh, yeah, come hang out with us and, and we'll talk about our pulls. As always, comic fam, be kind to one another and read more comics. Later. Ah!